On this hunt, I'm bringing my pals Clay Newcomb and Randall Williams up to my cabin in Alaska. Bombs away. We'll do some fishing and shrimping, of course, but mainly we're here for spring black bears. Let me at him. Clay wants to try something I've long considered. Slipping on a wetsuit and putting a stalk on a bear from beneath the water surface, hopefully getting close enough for a bow shot. Just a lot of bear activity right here. If he can manage to pull it off, I'm gonna be mighty jealous, but I'll still take full credit for the idea. If I had my wetsuit on, I would literally just swim over to that bear. I've followed trails of all kinds, pursuing wild game through our country's wildest places. These are my stories. There he is. These are my people. <laughs> I'm Steven Ranello, and this is Meat Eater. got a little boogie board with some holes drilled up in it with some hay string coming out. So I'm gonna tie the bow down on the boogie board, custom paint job on the boogie board. Thought about putting some seal eyes on it. But... <laughs> oh, googly eyes. <laughs> and then the idea is that I'm gonna swim and pull the bow. There's gonna be a lot of coordination that's gonna have to happen. And it was totally Steve's idea. I planted this idea in Clay's head. And I'm having buyer's remorse a little bit, but not bad. I've multiple times thought to myself, man, if I had my wetsuit on, I would literally just swim over to that bear. Because you'd be like a seal. I'm all about sneaking up on bears. Are you good in the water? You know, I'm a good swimmer. I'm not like, yeah. I mean, I'm just OK in the water. The challenges for me, though, are going to be that I'm not experienced at all in a wetsuit. Oh. So actually getting over to it, getting my footing enough, shooting the bow with that heavy suit on. That ain't no problem. You've been practicing in your flippers? <laughs> no, you have to slip the Walking fins. around. As soon as you get to where you can touch, you got to slip the fins off. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I've oftentimes been like, man, if I had my wetsuit, I would go up and be able to grab that bear with a wetsuit. <laughs> of all my friends, Clay Newcomb loves bears and bear hunting the most. It's not even debatable. He's obsessed and has pretty much raised a family of four kids on bear meat, as well as building a career around the subject. Bear hunting, judging bears, is all about scale. When you come into a new place, it takes a while to to understand how tall the trees are, how big around they are. So when he and our colleague Randall Williams, we like to call him Dr. Randall, drew tags for this area, we made a plan to hunt together. There he goes. There are a couple important things to consider up here regarding bear hunting. You can see bears all day long, but evenings are pretty special. That's when you tend to see the most boars. That fact means you can spend some time screwing around midday, which for me means fishing. Then in the evening, it's bear time. I'm feeling good about this spot. The second thing is that here you cannot shoot a bear or a deer for that matter from a boat. You gotta be standing on the ground. You'll see why that matters in a bit here. Oh, another thing is that you cannot hunt black bears the same day that you fly in an airplane which means we're gonna head out for an evening angle. We're gonna target ling cod, a tasty and toothy fish that isn't terribly abundant hereabouts. In fact, you're only allowed one a year or two if you're really lucky. You can retain one ling cod that measures between 30 and 40 inches and another that measures over 55 inches. In general, that 55 incher ain't gonna happen. But then again, it might, which is one of the million things that makes fishing interesting. Before we start jigging though, a brief tutorial is in order. Quick jigging practice. Who wants to start? Give it a shot. This isn't a good spot. We're just gonna practice so that I don't scare so that I can get all riled up in a good spot. Okay, Randall, drop it. As soon as it hits, come up a few full cranks. 
There's fish laying down there. Jig, jig, jig. Are you off the bottom? Yep. No, here, let me show you that, man. Okay. Yep. You want a jig? Okay. Like that. That's a fish. <laughs> Are you serious? He grabbed it on the way down. Is he there? <laughs> okay, he's got to go bats of quill back. They're, they're inescapable. Like, all you do all day is let them go, but you can't keep them. So take that other rod. So if you just turn it loose on the surface, he'd die? He can't adjust his swim bladder, so he'll just float. Bottom? Yep. Two, Two cranks. cranks. Jig, yep, good jigs. And then when you hit bottom, come up. Oh. Got him? Is it big or is it a quill? I think it's a quill. It's interfering with our link gods. Catch him out of port, release him out of starboard, Randall. Oh. Yep. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting smaller and smaller. All uh, right, you're getting the hang of it now where we're going to be ready to move into the good spots. All right. <laughs> Let me at him. Ah. Big? Yep. Yeah. All right, we're not fishing this spot no more. <laughs> I can't handle it anymore. <laughs> As long as we're out here burning gas, it's not a bad idea to toss out a few shrimp pots so we can let them soak overnight. We're baiting them with salmon heads that I bummed off our pilot. Bombs away. Okay, slow circle. Pots in the water, we head to what I hope is a more bountiful lingcod spot. Oh. That's a, not a ling cod, that's a ling. All right. Oh, really? <laughs> that's, a, that's a kelp ling. Nice fish. Oh. Big? Yeah. Let's go, Randall. Let's go, baby. And that's not a fish, I don't know what it is. You might have a big old ling cod. Who knows, Randall? Might be a big old. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> big old catfish. <laughs> Oh, no, it's, the, a, the it's tip. snagged in the side. Oh, that's why it was acting so funny. That's why huh? it's acting weird. That's our target species, though. Hold that a minute. And he's a keeper, but just barely. 30 on the money. Slot tickler. That's all right. <laughs> there you go. Well, that feels good. There's a lot of good yield on that fish. Oh, they're just meat, man. All right, Clay, you're up. Go get him, Clay. No, 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 fast, fast. Fast, but I get slack, ain't it? No, there you go. It's kind of a unique style, but you're all right. That's a good jig. Yeah, oh yeah. Bottom, crank. Oh, oh keep reeling. Oh. I, I got a fish on there. I can't tell. That's rock fish. Yeah. What is that? That's a, get him, get him, get him, get him. That's a very good fish. Really? That's a silver gray, rockfish. We can keep him. Oh yeah, that's one of that's a great fish. That's a good one. You know one of them. Oh there. What was that all about? What did I do? You, what are you? You're you're slacklining the down. fish at the top of the stroke. You don't, you don't there he is again. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying to. You're gonna you let them go. I tried to you let him go again. Farmed him. You're like slacklining him. You're never gonna catch him now. He's not gonna do that to me more oh, times. So let's go. Let's go. What should I do? Just drop him. Drop right it down? down and stop doing that. You gotta reel into him. Oh, that could have been a big one, man. That looks good. Did it feel like a huge one? Of course, one? the one that got away. <laughs> it, it did. Was a huge one. He looks huge. With a few eaters in the cooler, we pack it in. Clay probably killed the spot anyway. I feel like there was more down here we'd know about it. Go ahead and crank up. We'll get you a keeper tomorrow. How's that? Okay. It's a warm up day. The next morning, we still have some gearing up to do, and I'm not really worried about getting after bears until the afternoon, so we decide to mess around with a little more fishing. 
we also got to check out our shrimp pots. Look, I've got perfect form right now. I'm giving a nice jerk. We should be getting a hit. No slack going down. Dude, when he hits, I'm not even setting the hook. I'm reeling straight down to him. Maybe even going in after him. <laughs> <laughs> we should be getting a tickle in here, Clay. Oh, oh, there he is. I told you. Did there you get on him? He's on him. I, I did. He's on him. That's not big, though. Yeah. It's a little bit bigger. I mean, it's not. Big. It's not a keeper lean cod, I can tell you that. Yeah. Get him in the boat. Is the keeper? That's, yeah. That's a that smallmouth bass. Oh, yeah. It is, oh, yeah. What a walleye. It's only cool. Nicely done, sir. Come on. Big dog should be down there. You hear all those sea lions, see them? Oh. Sounds like a guar concert. That's them piled up yeah. right there? <laughs> That's crazy. crazy. That's why I feel like these fish got to live in such constant paranoia. <laughs> That's a fish. Get him in the boat. Oh, it can't. Don't green link. We'll take him. Ooh. That's a good fish, though. Oh, yeah. Two for two. Great. Oh, ooh. ooh. Is, that, is that a fish or the bottom? Clay's well, got a fish. Told you I was gonna set the hook. <laughs> Told you. You all fell out of the boat, too. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Uh -huh. He got off. Are you got I'm kidding. setting the hook, dude. No, no, it's not your fault. Dude, I hammered that fish. Yeah, I know. And it reeled like, into it. Looked like you were fighting it weird, though. I want like. I, I want a replay. <laughs> Looks a little better. Oh, Clay, I lost one, too. Hmm. I guess it wasn't your fault. <laughs> I got a fish on. Oh, you do? OK. Hook that one. You got him? Yep. <laughs> That's a keeper, isn't it? <laughs> what a beast. Nice fish, Clay. After picking up a dandy fish and hitting a handful more spots, we get to thinking about those shrimp and, after that, those bears. Can't wait to see what's in that pot. Oh, man. Talk about struggling. Hey, that's enough for, like, a one-man dinner. the worst one. <laughs> Man, that looks like the kid's meal. <laughs> Boys, but I've seen worse. It's a pretty meager haul, but that's OK. It's not what we came here for, so it's just extras. We do, however, need to find a bear. As dusk approaches, your typical southeast Alaska weather rolls in. We head out to comb the shorelines. This is my first time ever hunting with Randall, so he gets to be up first. Clay in his wetsuit can wait. In the meantime, he's gonna scout around. We're gonna hop out and we're gonna canoe through there. Just motor along this edge and you'll wrap around and you'll be able to see grass flats at the head of this. So just go glass that flat. Alaska, this area gets 13 feet rain a year. Typically, the rain would shut down bear movement, but here, it really doesn't. These bears, they get eaten rain or not eat. Other places, this would not be a great evening to hunt bear, but here, it kind of feels berry. I'm gonna go down here and get in a little grass flat and glass, but look at spring these bears feed they're coming out of their winter torpor and they're wanting some green stuff the thing i don't get about black bears is they like coming out at dusk you know 
about LA, no one does, kids. You got like four hours of darkness, and dusk lasts three hours, but they somehow know what is the last bit of dusk. They're always right on time. I'd be like, I don't know, feels dusky. I'm gonna head home. It's like the guys that used to go to the bar and you were at the bar, but it wasn't quite evening yet. <laughs> it's like, it feels suspiciously like daytime. <laughs> by the end of the evening, this spot is a bust, nothing. Overall, I'm a little surprised by the lack of bears, but we're gonna stick it out. No sense getting discouraged by a single bad night. Tonight's got me feeling defeated. You could play in the fog, but I don't think that's it, man. I don't think it's like, cause it's a little drizzly. They didn't come out when it was raining like this. They never come out. You know that, it's a bear in the woods. It's like it's a bear eating the rain. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. The next day, the rain has cleared out a bit and the waves are calm too, so we head to a more distant location. Yeah, boy, there, there could be a bear back in there, man. Maybe that fog and rain was the problem last night, or maybe it's the new spot, because today, we find a bear right away. Oh, I'd be a good wetsuit bear. <laughs> be a great wetsuit bear. It's not big. Man, I'm getting a different feeling about it. I mean, it's possible that the scale is just different than what I'm used to, but it looks like the right walk for me. Yeah. They look bigger when you look through the binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> Randall, I need you to go stand over by that bear to give us a scale, because I know you're like six foot plus. We could hunker down in the canoe and get closer. Steve and Randall, they've gone after this bear. And as bears do, the longer we looked at it, the more they thought maybe it was a shooter bear. But judging these bears is really tough because you're watching them walk along these rocky shores. And unless you've been here a lot, you just don't know how big those rocks are. That's a shooter bear. That actually looks like a pretty big bear right now. He's gonna spook out. Oh, the bear's leaving. The bear headed up into the old growth, but he wasn't booking. Randall and I head to shore to see if we can coax him out with a little calling. Oh, that pressure call. He's coming. Randall can't see him. That bear's 30 yards from Randall. They're right on top of that bear. Why can't they see that bear? See him. Right, 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 right in your face. Right in your face. Stand up. Right there. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. You know he was running, that was a great shot, man. He's down. That was a big bear. How we misjudged it. <laughs> wow. Holy cow. That's what we're doing. <sighs> man, that call sucked him in, man. Wow. <gasps> I heard you say he's down the beach. I'm looking no, like I was this. Saying, in your face. <laughs> I turned down the beach. I was looking down there. 
Then I look over and see where you're looking. And I turn around, he's right over my shoulder. That's why I said, in your face. Right over my shoulder. <laughs> so when he popped up over that rock, we were ready to shake hands with him. More. <laughs> Dude, that bear's bigger than what I thought he was. I, you know, once we got <laughs> right up, when we spooked him, him, I was like, that's a big When bear. he looked up at us. I thought the exact same thing. When I saw him walk off, I was like, dang it. That's a great bear, dude. That's definitely a six-foot bear. Yeah, man. Golly, look at the pads on the thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good bear. It's amazing to me how successful bears are. You wouldn't think that a big giant bear like this would be able to be such a successful omnivore across such a vast. Here it's I mean, easy for me to picture. In yeah. places it's hard for me to picture how well yeah. they stay out of trouble. Yeah. You know, yeah. places where you got like tons of human habitation, agriculture, roads, deciduous forests, you know, where they don't have that leaf cover all the time. Then I start being like, man, it just seems like you got a lot of problems. Yeah. But here, you're doing seems, I mean, this is like just tailor-made. Here you got like a pretty lengthy hibernation, but then you got all that, just the marine resources, man. He's got, they've got a lot of food. The icon of North American wilderness. Back at the cabin, Randall gets to work skinning his bear, while Clay and I head out to see if this wetsuit idea has any real world merit. Remember, you cannot shoot a bear from a boat, so the wetsuit will allow you to get in the water and make an approach and a legal shot. What happened? Uh, within about 40 yards of it, and it winded us. Underwater? Yeah. Despite the lack of success, I think it was a pretty good proof of concept attempt, or at least a chance to refine the strategy. We'll try again tomorrow. The next day, Clay heads out a bit earlier to give himself more time to plan his approach. Yesterday, we were right here and saw multiple bears right in this little cove. 
I got here when the tide's going down, when it's low tide, these bears come out and feed on mussels. Just a lot of bear activity right here. And there's a bear right down there. But I learned when you get in these channels, the wind sucks down the channels. I have a feeling that bear would wind me if I went over there. Meanwhile, I'm heading out to dive for rock scallops. As the day starts to dip into the later hours, Clay finds himself with another opportunity. That's a sow. Nah, that's a pretty good bear. Let's go. I'm gonna slip right across this channel and get in that water. This time, he's being extra mindful about staying downwind of the bear. <laughs> Salt water isn't good for a bow, but we just killed a bear. <laughs> that bear didn't run ten yards. Good size bear. Incredible. Very exciting to, to hunt like this. And this was Steve's idea. So I gotta give credit to old Steve and Ella. I didn't know that you could get in this water and not die. And it was like, hey, you could get a wetsuit and stalk these bears and not have to worry as much about the wind, not have to worry about sound. You can get in close. Incredible, man. Yo! <laughs> it worked. What happened? Man, I had to swim across that channel and it was eating mussels right on that point. And I just raised up out of the water probably 12 yards <laughs> and just just pin ringed it. And I watched it fall. Right here. Oh, this is where it fell. I mean, the, it, the tide has actually gone down, but if it had been one, one more roll, it would have been in the water. It's not a huge bear, but it's. I just was looking no. for one to just like yeah. do it right, you know? Yeah. It was exciting, man. Nice so, job, man. We managed to fill both tags and I gathered my limit of scallops. We just have a bit more work to do before we can finally relax and eat. What we want is that, the button. I like skinning a bear on the ground better than hanging it up. And you just kind of take him apart as you go. And I don't worry about leaving a lot of meat on the hide. Just we're in the field just trying to get the hide off. I'll let the tannery worry about fleshing it. The back straps off. All right. Let's 
So Clay, you got you got all the shoulder meat? Yeah, I grabbed the shoulder meat for this. I feel like if it's handled right, tenderized enough, uh -huh. it'll be good. You're saving the good parts for who? Saving them for back home, man. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of tenderize them with the butt of this knife. So this called, that's called the Arkansas tenderizer. <laughs> <laughs> so I have found that in the spring season here, you have to save all the meat from your bear. Mm -hmm. Right. It's optional in the fall. It's not required by law that you save your bear meat in the fall because they're eating so much salmon, right? So we never hunt them in the fall. But I have found that even in the spring, oftentimes there's a fishiness to the bear meat. A maritime accent? It's, there's a maritime accent to the bear meat. I like to tell a story that I borrowed my friend Smoker to smoke a bear ham. And after I was eating the bear ham, I went over and accused him of having not cleaned out his smoker after smoking salmon. Yeah. yeah. And he said, I've never smoked a salmon in that smoker. <laughs> I spend most of my life defending the taste of bear meat to people, mm -hmm. and they always bring up coastal bears. And I've never eaten a coastal bear. So this is going to give me a reference point for really if it tastes fishy. And this bear for sure, I mean, when I killed this bear, it was eating blue mussels off oh, yeah. of the ocean. What's up with the fancy pepper, man? I like the square can that has a real fine pepper like you'd get oh, at a no, 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 restaurant. No, 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 this no. is for jokers, man. <laughs> I like a pepper with a little crunch to it. Yeah. I like black pepper that you could use as a windicator out in the field. <laughs> there you go. Mm. There you go, look at that. We had a fire going in here, so we figured we'd just cook it right here. It's gonna take a little bit to cook this. So I'm just looking for that nice brown char on the outside, and it'll probably be a little crispy. All right, let's see if this tastes like uh, the ocean. Fish. I'm gonna close my eyes. Oversalted. Oversalted. I don't get a single hint of fish. I'm getting a little fish. Do you get a little fish? Slightly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? I think y'all are wanting to No, taste it's so it. subtle. No, it is. It's subtle. It's like a smoked salmon finish. I was trying to not hide the taste by cooking it in that fire. Yeah, but you put an unbelievable amount of salt on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that might be the Like the ocean. Piece. When he says it's gonna taste like the ocean, he meant how much salt he's put on this. <laughs> I mean, it's not like overpowering. Mm. No. No. Mm -mm. I'm gonna eat that bear all day long. I'm happy, man. Newcombs are gonna be real happy. We're almost out of bear meat. What are you cooking, Steve? Scallops. I don't know that I've ever had a scallop. How are you gonna cook them? I'm gonna sear it on each side. They don't really sear. You say that, but they don't. Like rock scallops, don't sear. Huh. And then I like to cut them. And then you just put the burnt butter on top of them. Very, very good. Dig into that. Now that tastes like the ocean in the in the right way. Man, that's excellent. It's like it's like meat. It's like mm -hmm. a mussel. Mm -hmm. I expect it to be more like fish. Uh -uh. Normally when you get scallops, you're getting the, the bay scallops, the real soft ones. Mm -hmm. These rock scallops are like much, dent, they're dense. I'm gonna put a little more salt on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's, that's hearty. Isn't that something? It really is. It's a delicacy. Delicious. Oh, it's a wetsuit meal. Kind of like an old Oceanside black bear. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a rich environment, man. It really is. Oh, it's incredible how much life is out there. Mm -hmm.
the, uh, these latitudes is the richest marine hmm. ecosystem on Earth. Hmm. And then you get like insane biodiversity in the ocean and then relatively light biodiversity on land. Hmm. Yeah, there is a striking contrast between what you're seeing on the ground here and what you're pulling out there's, of the sea. There's a small handful of tree species. There's a small handful of land mammals. And you look in the ocean. Yeah, there's only so many places on the planet left like this. It's a good spot.